Good afternoon to you. Mark Suddeth, HurricaneTrack.com, here with your Hurricane Outlook and discussion for August 20th, 2015. There is a lot to talk about, so let me jump right into it. Three areas of interest here in the Atlantic, one about to come off Africa, Hurricane Danny, and then Invest Area 97L to the south and west of Bermuda. First, let's take a look at the wide satellite shot. That'll give us the best perspective of most of the players on the field, so to speak. This is Invest Area 97L here. There's Bermuda. We'll talk about this more in a minute. This is Tiny Hurricane Danny. And then off the shot here in the darkness is the next system to emerge off of Africa. And what it may do in the coming days, we'll talk about as well. First of all, visible animation of Danny. Very small hurricane was able to develop a central core, deep convection, what we call the central dense overcast or a circular area of convective activity associated with that core right there. Uh, and you can even see here in the waning hours out here of daylight in the Atlantic, a few areas of deep thunderstorms going up and uh, it fought off the dry air just enough or there wasn't as much dry air as the better way to put it honestly. Uh, because believe me, dry air will kill something off very quickly. And so I think that there was less Saharan air layer for this to deal with and so it contracted and uh, kind of did what it had to do to survive and now become the season's first hurricane. Check this out. This is a microwave scan, so to speak. It's almost like an x-ray. Even though it's not an x-ray, it allows you to see the structure of the cyclone a lot better. And even though this is not a very impressive central core, you can see that it has a uh, closed eye wall. I think I can zoom in on this pretty tight. There we go. It has a closed eye wall in there uh, with a calm center in the middle and then nice banding around it. So a bona fide hurricane is just very small. Radius of maximum winds, those hurricane force winds, not very far, 10, 15, 20 miles at the most. You could ride your bike out of there in no time if you had to. I mentioned that on Twitter earlier today. So where is Danny headed? Well, it's headed to the west-northwest with time, more than likely going to brush the Caribbean Sea in some form, uh, but it's also headed into an area that will eventually mean we have to say goodbye to Danny. And the intensity forecast shows that with a downward overall trend from here, maybe some more slight intensification over the next 20 hours or so, maybe the next day, but beyond that, uh, and you can see that in the intensity guidance as we approach 30 hours or so right here, you really start to drop the intensity off. Why? Well, I'll show you. There's still plenty of dry mid-level air waiting for Danny out ahead of it. But more importantly than that, and especially associated with that, are the strong upper-level winds that are waiting for Danny. Danny is located right here and it's not too far to the west that we see very strong southwest winds coming across and that'll be ripping across the top of Danny as it moves into that and this will do two things first it'll start to blow those thunderstorms away from the center of circulation so you'll see it starting to look like a comet a little bit where the wind will blow those thunderstorm tops away so it'll look like a comet streaking through the sky or cotton candy being pulled apart whatever the analogy best suits you and it'll also decouple the low level circulation from the deep convection if we go back to the animation right now everything is aligned and stacked vertically but what will happen is these upper level winds will come along and push that deep convection off to the east and the low level center will continue to spin along its merry way uh, and start to weaken rather dramatically also because of this dry air sitting out here the strong upper level winds are literally going to inject that dry air into the system, into the core, and start to weaken it that way. It's kind of like poison through the veins, not a good thing for tropical cyclones, and it'll start to collapse what little convection is not blown away. And so by the time Danny reaches this area, it'll barely be a tropical storm. We're talking very strong upper level winds, very dry mid-level air, and as such, the intensity forecast for Danny clearly showing a downward trend as we move forward. Next up, 
We have 97L to the south and west of Bermuda. Kind of a squashed looking pattern to where it may end up going. I think generally speaking it looks like it's going to head off to the north and north northwest with time bringing rather inclement weather to Bermuda. So if you have interest there just be aware of it. Uh, the intensity guidance for 97L fairly bullish on developing it to almost almost hurricane intensity but definitely becoming a uh, rather strong either subtropical or tropical storm. Uh, let me go back to this picture here and look at the uh, a different perspective. Let's see what the best one is. I want to show you what 97L looks like. And I think the best way, it has a floater image over it, but this is also a good shot here. So you can see it in relationship to the eastern United States where a very vigorous cold front is moving through. But here's the area of interest, 97L, there's Bermuda, and here it is developing to the south of Bermuda. Uh, I think what you'll see is that this will be sort of a curly Q shape to it, larger, more spread out, certainly than Danny, pretty much anything would be, but it's not going to look like your classic hurricane, at least I don't think it will, you never know. Water temperatures out this way are certainly very warm, but it's transitioning from a cold core system to one that is sort of a mix between a warm core tropical cyclone and a colder upper level feature, very complex. And so that being said, it's probably not going to look like we're used to seeing. It'll be more spread out. Nevertheless, the winds could get up there to tropical storm force and beyond, and it'll move along its merry way. Again, bringing some rather nasty conditions. Uh, unpleasant, we'll say, not too nasty for Bermuda. After all, they weathered Hurricane Gonzalo last year. Uh, this won't be anything like that, nor will it be like Fay, but it still will provide some rough seas and the occasional rain shower for that area with gusty winds. I think of greater concern is uh, Central Pacific uh, disturbance. It's now a depression, I do believe, and this will eventually uh, become tropical storm and then eventually hurricane Kilo. I think that's how you say it, K-I-L-O and uh, it'll be headed in the direction uh, of Hawaii. Fortunately, it doesn't look like it'll be near Hilo. Uh, Kilo headed to Hilo, I'm not trying to make fun, but it's just kind of odd that it rhymes, right? But the western part of the Hawaiian island chain, this could be a real problem, especially looking at the intensity guidance. Uh, these are categories of hurricanes here on the bar scale, and this is expected to go up. Now, you see all the models in that direction easily a 45 degree angle there, maybe more, into the direction of becoming a hurricane in short order. Uh, the first time it reaches hurricane strength, we'll call it between 36 and 48 hours here. And so uh, folks in Hawaii, especially along the western chain, and of course these islands continue on out uh, to the west, this volcanic island chain, this could be a big problem for people out there. So pay attention, water temperatures along this area Definitely warm enough. This is the 27 degrees Celsius line, or about 81 Fahrenheit. This is 28 degrees Celsius, or 82 degrees Fahrenheit. And the Hawaiian Islands are sandwiched in between. Those water temperatures are running above where they should be. This is the anomaly chart. And they are a half to a degree, maybe a degree and a half Celsius, more than they should be. And here you can see these different dots, crudely representing the different islands to the west of Hawaii and uh, this uh, system to eventually become Kilo uh, could move up like this and that's how you get Hawaii hit by a significant hurricane is from the south so we'll have to watch this very closely one hopeful benefit from Danny by the way is that it could bring some much needed rainfall for the Caribbean it does look like it's gonna suffer quite badly the wind shear and the dry air to diminish it significantly and that it is so small of a system it's very fragile, believe it or not. Even with 80 mile per hour winds right now, uh, it could really uh, reduce itself very quickly in the face of these hostile conditions ahead of it. So hopefully that'll leave some leftover moisture, bring a couple of inches of rainfall, not too much more. You don't want to have uh, flash flooding issues, but maybe parts of the lesser Antilles into Puerto Rico and beyond could get some much needed rain out of this. We'll watch that in the coming days and see what happens. And then we'll see what happens coming off of Africa. Computer models generally in agreement that that'll develop. And we'll end August, it looks like, on a very busy pattern uh, with lots to keep track of in the tropics. All right? 
Well, that's it for me for today. Thanks, as always, for tuning in. I am Mark Suddeth for HurricaneTrack.com. I'll talk to you again tomorrow.